I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are talking to a woman who has had a remarkable and storied career. Her name is Dr. Maya Mitra Das, and she is a poet and short story writer. She is also a medical doctor and a PhD, and she excels in all arenas, and we are delighted to have the doctor join us here today on Spotlight. Good afternoon, doctor. Good to see you today. Thank you very much for your time, and Welcome, and I'm so glad to meet you and talk to you. My pleasure, enjoying talking with you as well. You've got a phenomenal book out there. We'll start in the middle of your story. There's a lot to your life, and we're going to get to a lot of it. But let's talk first about your book, Silhouettes of Time. Yes. It's a very lyrical book. It's a collection of short stories. Tell me a little bit about what this book means to you and what the viewers should look for when they're reading it yes i i it is very close to my heart because it's all true story and uh, i which i heard from my great grandmother grandmother and my mother and so when you, i was young i was um, i used to listen to them and it was all inside me frozen and then uh, you can, um, I can tell you how it came out. It, uh, I was, I was very interested in uh, music, Western classical music, though I am not uh, a concert pianist, but I can play and a uh, little bit. And then I was attending uh, a master class for the music teachers and the music students who were doing that graduate study with a special permission from a professor and he was teaching Chopin's ballad. After, after listening to the all four ballads of Chopin, oh, the whole class was very emotional and there was a pin drop silence. So, so the professor suddenly said, okay, Oh, you are you just you are so overwhelmed with emotion. Go and write a story. If you have a story, write it down or make it up. So the first story came out, which I heard from my mother. My mom was mother was in with Mahatma Gandhi during the you know the communal riot you know between the Hindus and Muslims when uh, our, you know. The, just before the freedom of India, got the freedom. And so she she was with Mahatma Gandhi on the east, co east side of West Bengal, not West, at that time it was Bengal, it was not divided, but he, she went and worked with, with him in the peace camp. So I was hearing this story about how she used to, she was a, incredible woman she she just is to carry a cyanide inside her that so so that if something happens she wouldn't give up like that she will just swallow it and kill herself and she used to go door to door um, uh, the Muslims will snatch their young women to their quarters and the Hindus also did the same thing on the other side. It was, it was uh, atrocities going on. So she was, uh, you know, went door to door to find any, any girl who was being, you know, taken. And so this is, this is how the story came out. Yeah. Well, you, it's a wonderful story. Um, it tells of strength during incredible hardship. And uh, like I said, the writing is very lyrical. You can almost tell it was inspired by music. The words that you use, the way you describe things. I think that is the art of your craft, is your descriptions and your uh, poetic yeah. writing. Actually, um, uh, the professor, I just, the stories came out in a short form. And uh, he, I was very skeptical. I said, uh, you know, I am auditing and, you know, I just asked, can I do this assignment? Said, yes, yes, okay. And then next day he came out, came to the class and he was so excited. I didn't know why he was so excited. And he was looking 
all the in my lines and sentences and things like that, looking for for the musical notes and sentences. So I said, no, no, just just leave it. You know, it's, it just I just came like it just came like that. But no, no, you, I have to do that. So he was uh, he was thinking how the description and also the Chopin's ballads and the music line and all all this thing. I didn't understand at that time because I didn't have the, so, so much of knowledge of the music as he had because he was teaching the master you know classes and things like that so but he was so excited and and he was he did that so uh, it, it was really a something which i didn't expect it right right but it's well deserved i can understand why he was so enthralled by your work on this short story and it really is a beautiful work and I think it was such a terrific exercise as well for the professor to play music and have that touch your heart and get the words flowing because, you know, you need to open up that part of your soul in order to write well, don't you think? Yeah, I think he did. He did. He was such a good um, uh, you know, you know, teacher, like he used to play, he still is play beautiful. I mean, his touch on the piano is wonderful. I cannot, it, it can, I cannot describe it. You have to hear it to, you know, understand. And then also the explanation of the musical sentences and ideas was wonderful because I was not so, so much, you know, um, it, I was not a music student. I was just watching that. I just like, like a fun. Uh, so I could understand and I was so inspired with all these things. I can I can see why. Now, when I'll let you get you to drop something, I'll let you pick that up. Okay. When was this in your uh, schooling? Uh, was this when you were younger? Was this more towards oh, later no, in life? Yes, yes, just before this, just uh, uh, two, um, two or three years before I wrote this book. Mm -hmm. uh, is this happened? I just took uh, took. Uh, uh, I, I learned music very late. Actually, that is also in history. My son is a musician. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he just uh, graduated. He, he has a degree from Oberlin Conservatory and then in you know, all those things, he has, he has very good. So when he was young, I, I didn't know anything about the Western music, music and classical music, Western classical music. And uh, he, he started, three years old, and then I had to learn his piece. So that's the way I learned where is C, where is D and things like that. And then uh, when I was, uh, when I was learning that, I just went to a teacher and said, this is not working. I have to learn music also. So she said, okay, I'll, I'll teach you. That was the start. It was, it was late. I mean, also, you know, like, he was three or four years old. I was, you know, married and all these things going on. And then I didn't have anything about classical music. And I started from there. Amazing, amazing. And then you also took a creative writing course. I know the introduction to your book is written by one of your instructors there. Tell me a little bit about that course and if it was helpful as a workshop type setting to help you get the thoughts out of your brain and put them on the paper. Yes, I, I used to write like essays and things like that. And when you were in school, everybody writes like a little bit. The teacher will give assignment, you write this thing. That's all I had. And then um, because we, we left India, we just went to England and then came to United States. So the letters I used to write to the parents and all other, that's all the writing capacity I had. So uh, one, one day I just was uh, looking at the, you know the uh, adult educations and all those around whatever it's and I saw the creative writing I said what is creative writing I don't know I have to under understand what is what is I never heard the term creative writing in India or in England or whatever so uh, I just uh, I just said you know what I don't know what is creative writing but I just wanted to attend the class so she says come on she, she's younger actually younger than me of course and she says okay sure I am giving I am just taking the I will teach you the class so come so I joined that's all 
Wonderful. And apparently it was very helpful because you've been a pretty prolific writer over the last few years. <laughs> Thank you. This is this is the this is the story of each and every uh, thing I have done so far. Also music also I just took uh, from that thing and then I just joined the certificate of merit starting from the very beginning like preparatory teachers the music teachers association gives some uh, you know the kind of a test you know every year you take that one two three after ten then you graduate that so I started from the preparatory uh, taking the music teachers association step and then I graduated. So everything is just like that. Just like I just wanted to have the passion to do whatever, to see what it is. And I just took it and did it. Well, obviously, you're one to follow your dreams. That's kind of illustrated throughout your life. You came to the West in 1973. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that journey. I guess they used to call that era when a lot of Indians were emigrating to the West, the brain drain, right? The highly educated were coming and that kind of thing, correct? Yes. I, interesting enough, I, I think um, you teach uh, in State University in New York, and then my training uh, was uh, in, in a downstate me medical center and Kings County Hospital, which is under the State University Hospital mm -hmm. of New York. So that's why I started my training. And it was very uh, different. I was trained in England, but it was not at all compared whatever I, I did it in England. It was completely different circumstance, different atmosphere with the county hospital attached to it. And I never saw, um, I couldn't believe it that I had this, this kind of big high kind of image of, you know, United States, and I then I saw this, uh, you know, not so fortunate people are coming, and with the uh, with you know bronze and you know all those areas, and they they they, they wanted help. Of course, it was it was a honor to help them, and I was so excited to treat them, learning new things, how to deal with it. But it was a completely different atmosphere, like. It was very harsh for me when we put in that, uh, you do, 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 and then you have to learn there and then. And there's so many patients coming. I mean, uh, all night I'm, I am working. And then it was not like, we, we as a doctor, we work very hard everywhere in India, in England, I heard. But it was not like in the King's County Hospital, what I saw it. But it, and then I just, uh, one day uh, something happened. The, they, they told me, you, you know, the director wants to see you. So I said, um, okay, uh, I don't know what I did, but I, I just went and I just went there. And then he, she said mm, that Dr. Das, uh, people are complaining that you were um, your name, you know, the, you know, sari and your own dress, you know, from from you know India so I said I didn't know that you know I have to leave my clothes out you know other side of the ocean to come to United States I thought it's a free country so she said okay you go whatever you want to do do, do it so he, because other people was very um very actually um not very satisfied that I was still wearing my sari and right. then I was proud of you know doing that and then I also asked that are we are, are we serving are we the babysitter of this this area that the mothers leave their child here and go and said Dr. Das you, we are all like that we have to do it because you are you are doing a great job so so that that you know in inspired me I, I thought my god she's telling all these things it, it really inspired me to work more so all these little things actually helped me in, right in, 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 for our viewers job. at home king's county hospital is one of the busiest hospitals in the united states it's one of the biggest medical centers in new york city it is overwhelmed with patients 24 hours a day. Many of them have been lacking health care for years. So when they get to the doctors at Kings County uh, Medical Center, 
they're often in desperate shape. They can be gunshot wound victims. They can be car accident victims. So you were really thrown into the fire, doctor, because there is no busier hospital on earth, I don't think. Yeah, and then one day I was very really scared. If 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 a, a a father came and said, "It's a knife," like this, and I was sitting on the on on the table. Where is the doctor? And then he put the. Uh, I was so scared. I said, okay, I will call the doctor. But anyway, <laughs> anyway I no, learned. smart. So I'll get the doctor for you. Wait here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so anyway, I, 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 now to look back, I, I think I, I am really honored to serve them because they needed help. And they, are, they were doing out of desperation because they needed help. And so I was there to, you know, just, Yes, they help the sick child and also the parents, you know, they were also desperate for the help but they, they wanted something for them, at least some good words I could, you know, you know, at that for that moment, they, they had some satisfaction that I'm taking care of their child and that helped them that also I feel that I am honored to serve them really uh, after some time I thought. I, I am really honored to serve them because I could do it. I mean, just like every day doctor, doctor coming in the office and doing, you know, that is more, more than what I did that I, I just could help these people. They were on the desperate help. So really it, it made me a different person, really. <laughs> exactly, it also made you a better doctor, I'm sure, because it's like training in a war. You're dealing with so much, so many things are being thrown at you. You have such a backlog of patients that you are getting years of knowledge within months and decades of knowledge within years, I would think. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and then that director said, uh, Dr. Das, if you survive in Kings County, you can survive anywhere in the world. So that was really good. <laughs> I'm sure. Have you ever thought about making an autobiography and talking about your years at Kings County? I'm sure it was complete culture shock. You met with some prejudice, obviously, when people didn't like the sari you were wearing. You were thrown into this environment that was completely foreign to you. And uh, you do have some amazing stories, like the man who came in with the knife. I think yeah. you got another book in the making there, doctor. Yeah, and actually, on the other side, there are the nurses, um, you know, and then the patients, they came and hugged me and cried, you know, all those. That also, I got it from them. And then and then one, one <laughs> so interesting, so sweet. Actually, she came with the $10 uh, you know, like a bill says, I cannot do anything, but can you buy something for you? I said, no, you take it. I will buy it. And I, if whatever you, you hugged me, you were so satisfied. That is all the gift you gave me. You know, I will, I'll treasure it. So, I mean, all these little things, you know, I just remember they, they have their heart, but they were so much overwhelmed with all this thing. They, they cannot, whatever they could do, they did it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. How long did you wind up staying at Kings County? At least two years. For two the, years, a long two years, I'm sure. And then did you embark upon your PhD? Uh, no, I, I did. Um, yeah, yeah, actually I started the PhD before and then after that Kings County, I finished the first PhD, yes. I see. Yes. And you went to California after that? Yeah, to to uh, yeah to University of uh, Los Angeles. Right. Um, yeah. And that probably was a little more sane but than the situation. It's just, just just the opposite, actually. I mean, a beautiful hospital, everything, this thing, big hospital, everybody is so <laughs> so. It's just amazing. I mean, a very very different kind of situation. And then also in UCLA, I just exposed to, there are, um, apart from the medical center, I used to run to, uh, there is a concert going on, there is, there is this, um, you know, the theater of arts, and all these people, they're all so, you know, knowledge people, they are, they're giving the lectures. I used to, I'm, I used to get crazy. I will, 
if, even I was working hard at the night, I will take some class and uh, the drama and things like that. So it was really so interesting. I just wanted to gr grasp everything. Like, you know, I, I don't know what to, what, what to do and what not to do. So I met so many uh, people there, which I never dreamed of it, that I would meet. Like I met somebody in the theater of arts, um, uh, Dr. Melanie's, who was with Bertrand Brecht. And I was so, I just took her, his class and it was so wonderful. And as to hear the stories from him, the Germany at that time, how he fled from Germany with a, just a briefcase and things like that. And then uh, also he, he taught us of uh, Bertrand Brecht. So, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so lucky, I think, I got this, all this. Absolutely. And also being out in Los Angeles, you were kind of surrounded in an arts culture. And yeah. apparently that was appealing to you from music to drama to writing. So it was tapping other parts of your brain that weren't quite being utilized as much being a medical doctor, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Actually, he is to... Professor Melanie's is to give, uh, you know, some um, work to do on the class and things like that. And he said, uh, you know what, I just, I, I wanted to know if you can write in English, English like this, why don't you, how you will write in your own language? I said, that's a shame. I don't write in my own language anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. But your book is available in both English and French. I thought that was pretty remarkable. Tell me why you decided to publish it in the French language as well. Actually, um, uh, Maple Leaf Publication, uh, and they were very nice to me. And then they told me that so many people in um, Canada, they speak in French. So I said, well, um, I, said, I said, can it? So I thought I had this feeling that they would, would very much like to re read it in French than in English, because uh, most probably they're trying, forcing themselves to or read in English, but they will enjoy more and feel more about my, um, you know, the book because this is the history and how the real, real, real story, and they could feel about uh, my family, how they suffered and all. So I thought that I asked them, is it possible? So they said, oh, no problem. We will, we can do that. We have some people. Wonderful. And I'm sure that made your lyrical writing even more lyrical because yeah. the spoken language of France it's so is sweet. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me about some of the other stories within Silhouettes of Time. Is What's your favorite? Oh, my favorite is my great-grandmother. My favorite is my great-grandmother who led the procession. Uh, she was an incredible lady. She, you know, uh, at that her time there was this thing going on in um, India that the clothes from Manchester Mill will come and flood the Indian market and the, the weavers of in, in Indian weavers their thumb has been amputated so that they cannot you know weave their, their, their clothes and so, so my gra great grandma thought that this is not, I cannot tolerate just sitting at home being a, a she was the wife of a judge and she, I cannot take it anymore. So she organized uh, a um, all the ladies and then they, she said that we will march at the town square, square and in prote protest we burn all the clothes from the Manchester mill. So she just gathered all the all the women and gathered all the all, all the you know those clothes and they went in the town square and started burning uh, the clothes and then the British police came with the mounted police came and dispersed them within you know that baton and you know they were dispersed and they were being hurt uh, but they they still did they that's you know they kept on going and said uh, free India leave our leave our country country and Bande Mataram that is means you know our to my our mother India you know so they started they're they're bleeding their hands are fractured with their you know the with the police lati charge and things like that but they st still kept on you know shouting the slogan please please leave India. We want the you know, free India. So 
I, I think she's a great woman. I think uh, there's a lot of great women in your family. Your mother is a very strong woman. Your grandmother is a strong woman and you're a strong woman. So uh, I guess that kind of runs in the genes, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Most probably, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a humble woman as well. Let's talk about your book of poetry. It's called Rhythms Primeval. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind those poems. They seem to deal with many different aspects of life. Yes, uh, that is another story. I was, I was attending an opera class, and Dr. Jerry Ball, who's is you know, he's I don't know how to describe. He's a dramatist. He was opera singer. He's a poet. He's a writer. He he knew so many languages and things like that. And he's a, he was very renowned haiku master, Jerry Dr. Jerry Ball, and he was teaching opera. So I just went and you know, sitting at the back, and then uh, one day. After the class, he came. He said, Listen, I am I am going to teach poetry, and you come uh, in the adult education. I will teach poetry. So I said, okay. So what I have to do in the poetry class? Read poetry, and so no, no, no. Read not read only poetry. You have to write poetry. I said, oh no, I cannot write poetry. I didn't write poetry. I wrote poetry long time ago. In in uh, just but been forced on me by my, my school teacher, I cannot do it. So not only you have to write poetry, you have to um, write and share with your you know, classmate. I said, are you kidding? No, I, 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 I don't want to go then. No, you sh should come. And then he made me, he said, oh, you come and then we will see. And then I will guide you. That's the, that's the start of my poetry class. Wonderful. And then, when I went there, it, I just I just realized this is a different world, and uh, Dr. Jerry Ball made it a you know different world for me, and then that's what I started writing poetry. Tell me about some of the poems that you wrote, and uh, or let the audience know about the poems that you wrote, and um, how they affected you. How you think you, they'll affect them? I I think so because. I can I can read some of them if you want to. Sure. Okay, so we like I can read one or two of the haikus or one little bit longer, but the longer poem it will take. Okay, I will read some haikus first. Okay, great. And for our folks at home, the name of the book is called Rhythms Primeval. Yes, it's available it at uh, mayamitra.com. It's also on amazon.com as well. You can download it for Kindle or you can buy the book, which is probably the best thing to do. And also in my website also. Yep, your website is mayamitra.com. That's probably the best place to go. You can order the book directly there. Okay. And you can also learn more about Dr. Uh, Das. So we'd love to hear your poem. Okay. A thousand diamonds rain drops on oak leaves in the blaze of wintry sun. A thousand diamonds rain drops on oak leaves in the haze of wintry sun. Through the quiet, the rocky river comes closer with rounded softness. Through the quiet, the rocky river comes closer with rounded softness. Autumn afternoon, Misty light slams through the trees. Sudden thunder breaks the peace. So um, these are the haikus, and uh, maybe I'll read one of the. Um, that's beautiful. So that's a good daily reflection at when you want to contemplate nature a little bit. Yeah, and this one is also my favorite. The harvest moon. Now the harvest moon is just over here. Uh, just the and full moon was just a few days ago. Yeah, it was just the moon festival, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is, okay. The harvest moon. Summer was shy to say goodbye. The harvest moon was up filling the sky. The trees swayed in gentle breeze, murmured their songs to a misty dream. The moon, like a baked round loaf, peeped through the drifting clouds. Over moon struck land, along the hoofs of the owl, I traveled back in time to a faraway place, landing on moon brushed house in an old familiar courtyard. Yes, here, yes, here, 
under the harvest moon. I played and danced and I danced and played with my loving grandmother all the way until dawn. Beautiful, beautiful. That sounds like it might have been inspired by a dream or something, dreaming of your grandmother. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, because I often have dreams like that of my, my parents are gone. And, you know, you sometimes get this connection in your dreams. And you'll have like a, a wonderful experience with them, such as dancing under the moonlight. I think you've really kind of captured that feeling there. It's wonderful. Thank you very much. Is that one your favorite? Yeah, my favorite. And another yeah. one was, uh, as you said, long poem. The same with the great grandmother. I just, uh, how she went and uh, uh, burned the clothes of the British in, in the in the town square and things like that. Yeah, this one and, and great grandmother. Uh, great grandmother was the person who, who just burned the clothes at, in the town square at, at the Manchester Mill. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I can see why you're work has been recognized by a lot of people. It, your short fiction has been included in an anthology called Tremors. And that's a collection of writings by people in California. Tell me a little bit about your work that is seen in Tremors. I actually did, uh, we had the class, uh, writing class, writing, we, we used to write every day and also homework and things so one day suddenly we had that idea that why don't we get all our little stories together and then uh, you know just publish it actually um, our teacher Janice De Jesus she was the one who inspired let's let's do an anthology so she was the one the person who just inspired us and so we were thinking, we will just, somebody said, oh, we'll publish in some magazine or so, no, no, we will do this like anthology. So, so that's what it started actually. And she all edited most, all of the stories and all of us were very, very inspired that she was, she was telling and it was very nice feeling that we just came together and, you know, we did the anthology. Wonderful, wonderful. And another anthology that your work is included in is called Insight, Hindsight, and Flights of Fancy. Tell us about that. That also with, with these people, uh, in that story, I have, um, suddenly I had an idea that um, I will talk, talk to, you know, Poet Shelley suddenly at night. I was just writing something at night and then is had, had, had an idea. What about that I should talk to Poet Shelley? And just like in my imagination, of course, you know. Wonderful. So, but, but, and then there, there is, there's a plant and it just moved with something a little bit. And then, oh yeah, well I'll say that, well, she, most probably he is here and I will start talking with him. And that's what it started. Amazing. It's a very unique perspective and a very creative idea. I'm sure it's a, a lovely piece. Are you yeah. working on anything right now? Are you doing some writing yes, right now? Yes, yes. It is a, it's a novel and I, I hope to finish it uh, before Christmas. And it's, it's another very exciting uh, thing for me, actually. I hope it sh should be to the readers also. It is about a character who I uh, took it from 15, 14th to 15th century artist from Florence, a sculptor. Uh, is not Michelangelo because uh, Michelangelo, everybody knows and so many books have been done, uh, but it's a different one. Uh, and then another person who is my dear friend, he came from very unfortunate, um, you know, you know, circumstances like he couldn't even have it, you, know, you know, two meals a day and he was very poor and didn't, couldn't go to school. And then he struggled, uh, became a doctor. And now he's a very famous neurosurgeon and he got, uh, oh, you know, a British, you know, he, Queen Elizabeth gave him the, Order of British Empire. He is a 
very renowned neurosurgeon all over the world knows neurosurgeons neurosurgical society knows about his name that how how good he is he, he saved so many people's life not only save but we, he, there used to be some uh, surgery where the people will get better for the timing but there there will be some paral paralysis or something something about that but with this surgery this goes completely normal person walking like that so so this person his art like a sculptor who is doing his art and this person who is a different kind of art which is not art what you mean but it is in medicine but it is also art because how he did the surgery is an art i think in a different a different you know su subject actually so i am just here doing this almost done at the almost it's it almost at the end and i hope to finish it uh, before Christmas. that sounds wonderful now this will be a novelized account of the doctor's life yes yes yeah. yes yes and then i can tell you the uh, title echoes of the past nice i like that <laughs> sounds great and uh I, I think your audience will like that as well it th sounds like a wonderful book you'll complete it in by christmas and hopefully it'll start being distributed by winter or spring i guess right yeah yes sure <laughs> I that sounds so. wonderful before we go tell me a little bit about your family i know you mentioned one son was a musician musician is he a professional musician tell me a little bit yes. about that oh he he's uh he went to he was very good in um music from the when started him at three years old and was very good in music and then he's very good in writing and also other other arts because, because he paints and things like that but music is focus uh, and also he did he over in conservatory sent him to france to study something you know he didn't so he he did that and then also in the cal arts he did the postgraduate He's, he he just makes music and um, he's independent and doing still music and wonderful <laughs> wonderful do you get to see him perform oh I, I when he was when I, when he was young actually now he doesn't want me to go all the all the way <laughs> but, but when he was young everywhere you know he just played so many places. Uh, he used to be very his instrument in, uh, thing was he can play all the all the instruments, so many mu musical instrument, but piano was his main thing. And so he got so many awards on piano and and uh, on, on music teachers conferences, and people will ask him to play in different you know, concerts and things like that. And then, but he can play um, any. If, even he can play some Indian means Indian instrument like tabla and the string instrument. He he took some some lessons from Ali Akbar Khan. I don't know whether you know him. He's no more, but he was a very very famous Indian uh, sitarist. Um, so uh, like that, yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, it's a talented family, no doubt. He's got a talented mom. Like I said, Dr. Maya Mitra Das is a poet and a short story writer. She's a medical doctor and she has a PhD. Most people would be lucky to claim one of those titles. She claims all four of them, and I'm sure there are even more we could mention <laughs> as well. The names of her books are Silhouettes of Time. It is a collection of short stories. It is available in English. It is also available in French. She has another collection of beautiful poems that will inspire you and will be appropriate for different times and different aspects and different occasions in your life. It is called Rhythms Primeval, and I recommend them both. You can get them on her website. It's mayamitra.com. It's right there on, your web, on our screen right now. So you can look up the doctor. You can look at her works. You can read more about her and her fantastic life. Dr. Das, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. I, I'm so glad that you could give me some time and can, can talk to you. <laughs> it was a true pleasure. I truly enjoyed it. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford. 
thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, on Spotlight.